Well, it is recording. Hello. This is a follow-up to the last morning video that I made in Kerning Tower. Um, just yesterday, actually. So, we did a whole hour of morning in Kerning Tower, and we got about 300 million. But today's video is going to be a bit different, and it's going to be talking about the actual areas where you can go to find these kind of mysterious veins here. This one, for example, has just spawned in Leafus Dragon Forest. And the reason that I came here is to demonstrate that herbs and other mineral veins do spawn below level 130 on the maps. It happens rarely, but they do spawn below that level. I'm not entirely sure what the minimum level is, but honestly, I don't often see these kind of things happen in any maps below, you know, the 130 range. That being said, you may be able to find maps which are good below that level range. We're going to be talking about level 130 maps at least for now. Let me get this one. Okay then. So this video isn't going to be an hour long by any means. What we're going to be doing is just going and having an overview of the areas that I particularly go to. The first one that I would go to, which is immediately within our level range, is the Moon Bunnies. As you can see, the Moon Bunnies on Korean Folktown are 130 exactly. And they spawn mineral veins very, very often. It's rare that you will find any kind of Moon Bunny map without at least one herb in all of the channels. I mean, I've just gotten here, and just by pure luck alone, you can already see that I found one of them. It's a really good series of maps to mine. Most people tend to ignore these things at this level range because they're trying to boost the alts. And they just don't care about these mineral veins at all. Which is perfect for you. Um, I would pick a character who is mobile because this area in particular can be missed. So... This is the actual route that we'll take. These areas, these side areas, do actually spawn um, mineral veins themselves, and they're worth checking out, but they're not part of our main path. We can do these afterwards, if we still have some spare time left. And I would recommend doing it some days. See? I would check these ones left often and then the main path stuff. In all honesty. Back onto the main path. Okay, so your main path is pretty simple. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven maps. Seven times two is fourteen for hundred and forty maps in 20 channels. This is below half the amount of Kerning Tower, so these maps should take you probably 20 minutes to do in total. They're usually quite resource rich, so I would definitely recommend if you're looking for any kind of minerals or herbs to check out Korean Folktown maps. They are fantastic for it. And after you're done, you should also consider trying to check these areas out here, the side paths, as we just discovered they can also hold some good minerals. Anyway, the next path that you want to check out, uh, as in the next level range, is obviously Kerning Tower. After people are done with Korean Folk Town, they will head to Kerning Tower. And you can find herbs and minerals in these maps, that entire square. And you can also find herbs and minerals on these lower paths. But I would only bother checking this one here, the electronics store. Because it doesn't often, sp it doesn't always spawn them, but it is an area where you can just go, say for example, start on channel 1. Quickly check by the door. Yeah, 
and as you know, as soon as you go in here, you can immediately see that there is some returns on that one. Someone's here. I'll just fame them. I don't care. Uh, so, after I'm done with this one, uh, there is another one. It's actually Commercy. It's the next level up from Kerning Tower. I mean, the maps are about 160, I believe. And to access Kerning Tower, you can do that from pretty much any town. Which is convenient, because it's a mining zone where anyone can easily get to. As long as they have the level requirements to get to Commercy, and they've done the pre-quest and everything, they can just go, you know, quick move. Commercy dungeon, move there. It's got some kind of bottle there. There's a few maps at Commercy which you can do, but the main ones which people do do starts from here. Um, it's only three maps, so it's one of the quickest routes that you can take. So, you know, three times two is 60 maps. Um, it's usually pretty dense. You can find quite a bit of resources on this map. And the reasoning being is because you know, when people go to do the daily commercy quests, they're not going to be stopping for uh, a mineral vein, even though, you know, the amount of money that they can earn from doing that is, you know, sometimes ironically more that they can earn just doing the daily commercy quest. Uh, the other quick maps that you could do are these canal maps. The canal maps are usually done by people who are in a pre-quest themselves. They don't see as much traffic, so the herbs don't reset as often. But these canals here can be quite densely packed with herbs. Because obviously they just want to rush the pre-quest. Some people are just trying to get their mules done so that they can easily access it, etc. It's just um, it's just a generally good series of maps to get you minerals. Uh, beyond that, we're probably talking about going to a future Twilight Perion, but... From personal observation, if you can find a map around here that people might frequent, then, you know, in the Temple of Time, it might be worth investigating. I haven't personally had any luck with these maps, uh, and I tend to ignore them, because they're not part of the metagame training maps. What you really want to be focusing on is maps which people tend to actually go to, um... Which is the Forsaken Excavation Sites, really. These four maps over here usually see a fair amount of traffic. You could also attempt to try out the Swollen Stumps here. See if there's anything around. We're on Channel 1. No, nothing on Channel 1. Got a curse on the map. Yeah, ignore that one. So I'm just going to do up to channel 5 to see if we can get one. Back. We can see that someone's actually here as well. See? So they are populated. I found a heart stone. Got some loot out of that one. But yeah, they do see traffic. It's a little bit loud. So now that I can actually hear myself talking. But yeah, these maps do tend to have some traffic in them. Mainly, as they are the primary alternative usually to the extraction site, you can see bonus experience points here as a giveaway that people do train. 
There's an elite boss there, so... Two channels right next to each other have got players in them. It's a great sign. No one's here, I guess. So I'll take that. Because you never know. There might be a cubic blade in that. And if we go to the extraction zone themselves... You will almost always find that this has got high traffic involved. So if you have any passive skills here, it's a good idea to turn them off. Because you will piss people off if you start killing anything on these maps. Yeah, see? One problem with this is since people are training here and you don't want to aggravate them, you can be kind of in a catch-22. And this is where Mikhail's skill comes in handy. Just press that. You won't get knocked back anymore. Just mine it. It's great. Got some juniper out of that one. And yeah. See what I mean? There's just a lot of opportunity here. Some people mine them, some don't. Most often they just want to get the levels done, you know what I mean? It's at the level 190 range where they just want to get to level 200, so they usually don't care about the stuff lying around. It's absolutely packed in here all the time, really. Ridiculously packed. And this is at midnight, in fact, so... So, yeah, they've got someone, who, he's even got a frenzy here, so he's paying out. Surprising to see a frenzy on this map in particular. Um, but now, all of these maps, this entire line is going to be densely populated with people. So just these four maps alone are probably worth investigating. You know, even if you just want to meet some people, I suppose, because it's always going to have at least two people in, or one person on a mule, or something like that. It's one of the most busiest areas in the game that I've seen so far. Next up, we have... the Arcane River. All of these maps well, not these maps, These, are, this is the crossing, but these maps down here, um, which will be happy adders to um, the joyful adders, all of those can often be densely packed with some minerals, especially on the channels 1 to 5, I suppose, because they get higher traffic. You can also find minerals around that area. You can find minerals across this cave path here. Uh, quite easily, but most of the time I think the majority of the ones that you're going to find is in this branch down there, the, the initial one. Now, I haven't gotten far, far enough into the Arcane River to really tell you how profitable you know, something like um, Lackling is. Well, we, I'll be there soon enough, but I haven't been really focusing on leveling up to get access to these areas. Um... But I imagine any of the meta popular training areas on all of these maps will also be packed with uh, mineral, mining, uh, mineral mining opportunities. On Choo Choo Island, um, you could do the river, the torrent. Um, 
you should probably try and focus on, I would say, Slurpy Forest, Dealer Bobber Forest 2, to the end one there, because I'm not too sure how much traffic that this one here gets. Uh, you might find some success in the Pine Deers, but other than that, I would just say Torrent Zones with your Boss Turtles and doing a Slurpy Forest Deeps. If you actually have the ability to survive in these areas, um, then yeah, you can also check out the whale. That's another problem that you should probably consider when doing the arcane river maps is if you don't have the arcane force to survive in some of the deeper areas, it's probably not worth investigating. At this point I've got 200 arcane force so I can pretty much do this entire map and it won't bother me. As you can see, Arcane Force does not extend outside of the Arcane River, so until you hit level 220 to 240, the excavation site enemies are still going to be doing some decent damage to you. So you're probably going to want at least um, a pet, which can heal you up. I've got a lot of elixirs on this pet, so I don't have to worry. I have put my buff on there, but that's fine. I wouldn't attempt to mine this area if I didn't have something like a ton of health potions or that because they really do um, start to add up. Uh, in the previous video I said that some classes might have a better time doing this than others. Ones with knockback resistance, all of them, any of them with knockback resistance is fantastic. You want a class which is very mobile or decently mobile. And you want a class which has got, you know, relatively good defenses or healing mechanisms, which is why I said Demon Avenger would be successful. Uh, you could try something like Paladin, I suppose. I've not personally tried them. Kaiser, Mihail. Uh, Hayato gets a 50% stance, I suppose, which is better than nothing. But classes like uh, Mercedes or anything with which doesn't take damage well like a mage probably not going to have too much fun mining in these areas and I would say that's about it for this video to be honest with you because I'm not going to be going deeper into the arcane I suppose there's a few maps which you could test out which are lesser known this is one which I've mentioned before in the Minar Forest when people solo Chaos Horntail, the first map that they have to come to is this one. If we go to channel 1. First they have to arrive here and usually they just go straight to Horntail. Which means you can very quickly check out these 20 maps and find occasionally some herbs and veins in them. It's a very quick map to explore. The skelly dogs won't bother you, usually. Yeah, there's one there. And clearing out a map on this area will take less than a minute for each map, really. You can probably cover two maps in a minute, so... This is probably one of the fastest daily mining zones that you can do. But it doesn't get that much traffic apart from people who have gone to Horntail. So, I would do this after peak time, not before. Because before, it'll probably just be a barren map. Of course, the more people that know about this one... This one's pretty fragile to knowledge. So, yeah. Anyway, have fun mining.